of reluctant teamsters and plotting gorillas. The Berryville Wagon Rain, as narrated by Sebastian Gruff. <laughs> Chapter 1, Page 1, Timid Teamsters Recruited for a Dangerous Wagon Trip. It was a snowy August day when our Union soldier, E.P. McKinney, is rounding up our completely clueless civilian Teamsters. Good morning, sir. We are collecting Teamsters to march down with us to Winchester, Virginia. As of right now, Webster and I will be more than grateful to take you down to the bridge, and we will start marching from there to Winchester. After that beautifully cut scene, you will see John Munson sitting around a cozy campfire, chatting with Mosby and other Confederate guerrillas. A useless map is laid out on the table. We're gonna strike them fast and strike them hard! Chapter 2, page 27. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Back to our oblivious McKinney who is currently supervising the loading of wagons. One, two, three! Hurry up, men. We need to finish loading and head on to Winchester. William enters and has a conversation with the Teamsters. I didn't want this job. We'll probably be attacked by most of these men. I feel the same way, but I heard there are soldiers moving alongside the wagon to protect the train. Don't worry, boys. If we run into any gorillas, I'll handle Mosby myself. Chapter 3, page 52. Russell's report. Confederate guerrillas are laying down their blankets on the hillside. With their expert camouflage skills, John Russell returns from scouting the area to report his findings. Saddle up, Mudson. You're coming along with me. Chapter 4, page 86. Hey, look, a cow. Oh, um, I meant to say, uh, don't trust the woman. Oh no, one of the wagon trains is missing. McKinney inquires with William and finds that it's broken down outside Charlestown. He and his orderly ride back to visit and meet his family trying to get a teleporting cow back in a enclosure. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, have you seen Mosby? Uh, no, not at all. He's probably miles away by now. So you haven't heard anything about him? No, not at all. Alright, thank you. Have a nice day. Don't listen to them. Him and his men have been in Berryville the past day or so. You will be safe from the attack if you get past Berryville. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. Chapter 6, page 129. I didn't realize it was nap time. I would have brought my teddy bear and blankie. McKinney finally finds his wagon train parked, with the mule being watered. The Union guy decided it would be a perfect idea to take a nap. Not an officer's in sight. Oh no! Oh no! Chapter 7. Page 145. Oh no, I didn't see this one coming. <laughs> Artillery from the Confederates is fired. Mosby, Munson, and the Confederates are making their way downtown, walking fast, assaulting the wagon train. A Confederate shoots at the kid, though it luckily just goes through his head. Then he tries to mount his horse. But it's shot again in the thigh. The cowardly horse runs off. The kitty is down for the cow. Chapter 
Jump to 8. Page 170. Cel <coughs> celebration time. A Confederates are celebrating their victory. I suggest you plug your ears. Kenny awakens again to hear soldiers ruining his great nap. He calls to them, trying to convince them he is a Union officer. I think that's Kenny. Fortunately, his orderly Webster is with them and has both of the horses. Webster takes McKinney somewhere to have his wound attended. Thank you.